At Galileo, we've been working with hundreds of AI teams that have been building out agents at scale. When we talk to them, they have two core problems. Number one, how do I trust my agents? The answer typically is evals. However, the second big problem is, how do I trust my evals? So we dug into this a little bit more and realized that there are three core problems with evals today. Number one is accuracy. Most LLMs as a judge have around 60 to 70% accuracy based on industry standards. That's just not good enough. Number two is cost. LLMs are expensive. One of our customers are spending $25 million on evals when they were using LLMs as a judge. Far lesser with Galileo now, which we'll talk about in a second. But number three is coverage. When you're using these large LLMs, the issue becomes that you can't really use that for 100% of your traffic anymore. So folks are just sampling 10% of the traffic. That's just not the way observability should work at all. Net-net evals are absolutely broken. The good news, there's a way out. And we call this eval engineering. Let's find out more about that. So there are three core principles of eval engineering. Number one, your evals need to be adaptive. Number two, your subject matter experts need to be in the loop. And number three, today's evals are tomorrow's runtime guardrails. Now, let's take all these three principles and actually put that into a workflow that you can use. So let's talk about eval engineering. It all starts from the LLM as a judge, which includes three things. It includes the LLM, it includes the prompt, and it includes a data set that you want to test the LLM as a judge against. What we've seen is LLMs as a judge typically have an accuracy of around 70%. This is just not good enough because this means that three out of 10 times the score or outputs are actually just going to be incorrect. That doesn't work for AI agents at scale at all. To bridge this last mile gap from 70% to 100% accuracy, what we've noticed is the secret resides in your use case and your data and your context. So how do you bake that in? Enter subject matter experts. Those are the folks who can actually figure out what the failure modes are and what the false positives and the false negatives are in your scorers. They can adapt the prompt really, really quickly. And when they do that, the accuracy jumps very fast from 70% to above 95%. What you have at the end of the day here is high accuracy LLMs as a judge. However, these are still extremely slow as well as very expensive. And therefore, you can't use this for 100% observability. And most folks just end up doing 10% sampling, which is again, just not good enough. How do you bridge this gap of 10% to 100% observability? Enter small language models. You can take the same prompt that you created before and also fine tune the small language model with data from your production traffic. With this fine tuned small language model as a judge, as well as the prompt that you previously created, you can put this in production and now you have a high accuracy, low latency, very low cost, alternative to that LLM as a judge for 100% observability of your traffic. But it's not over yet. When you put this SLM as a judge in production, things are gonna fail because the world is constantly changing. When you discover these new failure modes, you have to put this back into that LLM as a judge to further refine the prompt and the whole cycle continues. We call this the eval engineering life cycle. So as you can see, this entire workflow is not a one and done exercise. It's an entire life cycle that you have to go through over and over again. And hence, we call it eval engineering. One of our customers, a Fortune 50 CPG business, executed on exactly this eval engineering workflow, and they went from POC to production 15 times faster. And when in production, they were able to observe 100% of their traffic, not just 10% sampling. That's the difference that eval engineering can make, and is extremely necessary for building trustworthy agents at scale. With agents, the biggest blocker right now is trust and control. One of our customers, a Fortune 50 telecommunications business, went from one agent to 47 agents within the course of eight months because they unlocked this trust and control using eval engineering. You can do this too. At Galileo, we're very passionate about collating and sharing best practices around evals with the entire developer community. For instance, we have shipped tens and thousands of books, just like this one, about evals best practices. Starting today, we're very excited to announce that we're also gonna be sharing an entire course about eval engineering, all the best practices that I just talked about at your fingertips just at www.galileo.ai slash eval engineering. Take a look today. 2026 is going to be the year of agents. With eval engineering, let's make sure that these are trustworthy agents that actually scale.